uh, when it was the College of the Southwest. I came back in 2000, graduated in 2014 with a master's in uh, mental health education, University of Southwest. So I've been here and around here a long time. Uh, I've been with the police department now for 19 and a half years. I was asked, um, how, does a, how does a police officer live out his faith? How, how does a cop uh, keep his faith every day? So one of the things I had to do for me was to go back uh, to when I was a kid. But first I had to listen to my pastor. And uh, Pastor Brad is a, is a mentor to me. He's a friend to me, not only as my pastor, but I, I love the guy to death. But what he said was, people don't get interested in how many Bible verses you know, or, or, or if you can recite the 66 books of the Bible in order. What they want to know is your story, where you came from, why do you believe the way you believe, right? And there's a lot of people here that probably look the same way. So I go back to 1982. Some of you probably weren't even born in 1982, right? <laughs> but the thing, I go back to 1982 because I was a junior in high school. And while all my friends were getting ready to go to college and, and starting to prepare for college, I'm the youngest of 10 kids. Okay, I have seven brothers. I have three sisters. Uh, my father did uh, a lot of time in prison, so we weren't what you would call a, a great American family. We had kind of a reputation. You ever, you ever have any people that you hung around with that had that reputation? Well, I know in junior high school, I taught a lot of teachers to pray. Because every time I would walk to the classroom, they'd be saying, oh God. And I thought, wow, this is like a Christian school, right? And so I walked by. When I walked by, they were like, thank you, Jesus, right? But the thing was, so I'm, I'm a junior in high school, and I'm thinking, hey, I want to go to college. You know? I, I, want to, I want to go off to college. So I started talking to my teachers about going off to college. And the thing I heard time and time again was, well, Scott, you're, you're, you're really not college material. You know, your, your GPA is not really a GPA, to be honest with you. Uh, you haven't done very well academically in the past, but you're not, you're just not college material. Maybe you ought to think about something else. That, that voice is combination. That voice is telling you and, and telling you what you can't do, right? So I, I listened to that voice, and I went off and I joined the Navy. And in the Navy, I did very well. I, I started four years. And, and I did really well. I was making rank and, and, and getting along well. And, I, and a recruiter came to me and said, hey, your enlistment's about up. Are you going to re-enlist? I said, well, I've been thinking about it. He says, well, have you taken any college classes? And I said, man, I'm not college material. And he just kind of looked at me kind of oddly. He said, well, what do you mean you're not college material? I said, well, people you know, in, in high school told me I, I wasn't college material. I wasn't smart enough to go to college. And he said, man, what a lie. He said, you're, you're a leader. He said, you're a hard worker. He said, you're doing great in the Navy. He said, you would do fine in college if you believe that. Well, I re-enlisted, but I still listen to the voices in my head. I still listen to the same voices telling me I was a college material. So my second enlistment, I didn't take any college at all either. And when it was time for me to re-enlist for the third time, I decided to get out because I was moving around quite a bit and I wanted my kids to have a steady place to live. So we. We moved, and, and I ran into a professor, and he said, I know all places in a bar, and, uh, and we were talking, and he said, uh, he said, why don't you go to school? And I said, man, I'm not college material. Right? The voice goes over and over again, right? And he said, you can pass my class. He said, if you put effort into it, you, you can pass my class. I said, man, I'm not that guy. So I took him up on a bet. I took his class. I had to work hard. But I passed his class. I started going to church and started trying to look for more direction, right? And there's a passage in Genesis 3.11. And I think this passage has really resonated with me over the years. And, and I hope maybe you'll get what it means. Adam and Eve were in the Garden of Eden. And it says they walked with God. Now he's with them. He's walking in the garden with them. And it doesn't say how long. We don't know how long it is, right? But he's in the garden, and they're walking with him. Adam and Eve eat from the fruit of the tree. And God calls out to Adam one day. He says, where are you? And Adam said, I hid from you. And this is the question. Who told you you were naked? 
God walked with Adam and Eve for who knows how long. He never condemned them for being naked. He never mentioned them being naked. He never had a problem with them being naked. Who told them that they were naked? The same voices that tell you you can't succeed. The same voices that tell you that you're not good enough. You're not pretty enough. You're not college material. Right? The same voices that tell you you're not a good enough ball player or a good enough basketball player or whatever you can track soccer. Right? The voices, right, are, are, from, the, are from the devil. They're not true. So I started listening more to work. I started reading more. I started listening more. I started going to church more. Put myself around positive people. Right? And guess what? Things started to change. Like I said, in 2002, I come to the college in the Southwest, and I get a bachelor's degree in, in, in psychology. Right? That's amazing, because everybody always told me I couldn't do it. Right? I've been with the police department for, for 19 years, 19 and a half years, and I have seen people that have nothing their whole life. It's been nothing but people speaking evil in their life. You can't. You're not good enough. You're not pretty enough. You're not fast enough. That's all lies. But we believe it because we don't know any different. Right? So I decided to start listening to the scripture that tells me that I'm God's son. And I am good enough. And I am smart enough. And I am strong enough. And I can do anything I put my mind to as long as God's with me. Right? Amen. This is what I'm listening to. So I go to Promise Keepers. It was a movement several years back. Okay? And I'm, and I'm listening to this preacher. This preacher, he's talking about this guy that's in a museum. And in this museum, the curator is sitting down and he's looking at a, at a photo, at a, at a painting. And the painting is of the devil and a, and a man and they're playing chess. And the name of the painting is Checkmate. Well, in this painting, the man that's playing the devil is obviously a game for your soul. And he's sweating, and he's almost in tears, and, he's, and, he, and then you look at his face and you can see the fright in, in, his, in his eyes. And the devil is smiling, and his chest is out broad, and his eyes are bright, and he's just got this arrogance about him. And this guy sitting there looking at this painting starts to laugh. And the curator says, man, what are you laughing at? He says, he's got it wrong. He says, got it wrong. He says, he's got it wrong. He said, if that guy would stop focusing on the devil and focus on the game, he would know that if he made one more move, he would have checkmate. He would win and the devil would lose. But where's his focus? His focus is in the wrong place. So what we listen to what we focus on, what we hear, has so much impact on us. Young, there's so many young people in this room that, that sports is, is your life in this college, and that's absolutely fantastic. <coughs> but there's so much more than that. The education, your relationship with Christ, where you go from here, how you conduct yourself. As a police officer, in 19 and a half years, I have seen bad, bad things. And I've seen some of the worst things in the world that people can do to one another. And they do it in the name of, I'm right and you're wrong. I want to get ahead and, and this guy's in my way. You know, there's always an excuse for whatever it is. But let me, let me share with you this. God has a past for every one of us. It says in Jeremiah 19, right, 29, 11, right? And everybody's heard that scripture a thousand times. It says that, you know, I know, I know um, the purpose I have for you, right? That you will uh, that you will succeed and go on. But I want, I want you to listen to 13. He says, he will seek me and find me. And when you seek me with all your heart, I can share this I can share this with the, with the older because the more I understand about God, the more I understand that, that when I start looking for the right things, when I start putting myself in the right places, then even when I have trouble, 
Even when things are not going my way, even when things seem like, man, the, the whole world is just, is just coming down and, and nothing is going right, I still know that God's going to walk me through it. I still know that at the end of the day, God knows better than me. Amen. Now all I need to do is keep that faith. All I need to do is keep struggling and keep pushing and keep going and keep my eyes pointed up. Right? Looking for Him. Focusing on the right things. Listening to the right things. Okay? That, and that's what it's about. We go, we go about, and, and I meet people every day. Young men, young women in high school that grew up in the same kind of environment I grew up in. And they say, man, this is where I'm at. This is where I'll be my whole life. Who's making that choice for you? You are. You get to make the choice that you want to get out. You get to make the choice that you want to be different. Right? I was a cop in Highwood, Illinois. And there was a young man that everybody called him Yummy. Because Yummy was a kid that if he saw you and he wasn't running dope, he would come up and ask you for candy. So he got the nickname Yummy. Right? We like the kid. Well, Yummy come from a very proper neighborhood. Yummy wanted to be a black gangster disciple. So Yummy, at 11 years old, was told, well, if you go shoot so-and-so, you can be a member of our gang. Yummy went and did a drive-by. The problem was he hit the wrong person. And he killed a young lady. Two weeks later, they found Yummy under a viaduct shot in the back of the head. How does that happen? How do, how, how do you justify? How do you look at that? Right? As people were so mad, and they were up in arms, and we went to this kid's funeral, and the pastor said, why are you crying? Why are you upset? You did nothing to help this young man. You didn't reach out to him. You didn't teach him to be good. You taught him all the wrong things. And now everybody wants to cry. He said, this is the reality. He said, in order to change who people like him have become, he said, we got to change ourselves. we got to believe. And we got to believe in the word. And God says that we're more than conquerors. We're children, we're his children. And if he's the king, then that makes us heirs. That makes us valuable. Right? When you try to tell this to a kid from the street, they look at you because they don't understand what that means. But you young people in here can be mentors. You young people in here can live out your face so somebody else can see it. Some of you probably come from the same area I'm talking about. Right? Keep reaching, keep looking and focusing on the right things. You know, God's word says in Mark, right, that people that sow the good soil are the ones that hear his word, they accept his word, and then they go out and spread his word. We just can't sit in here and go, everything's going to be okay. We've got to take what we learn and go outside. As a cop for, for 19 years, I love it when I see somebody that comes to this university or in a junior college and, and, and they're a kid that I dealt with on the street and I'm thinking, man, there, there's a kid that, that's picking himself up and he's going to be different. Right? We all can be different. Where is our focus and what are we listening to? I know this might be a little bit short, guys, but listen, this is, this is, this is the most important thing in the world is that most of these kids don't think they're loved by anybody. They think that they're, they have to do something to earn love. They think that they have to, to uh, uh, earn everything they get. And God gives us everything for free. His love is for free. His mercy is for free. His salvation is for free. It doesn't cost us nothing. And I'm telling you, I see, I see officers that that man, they get in the same realm because day after day, time after time, you know, listen, when you're on patrol, people don't call you over to have coffee. You know, it doesn't happen. Lady doesn't call you up and say, hey, I'm having a great day today. Would you come over and have a piece of cake with me? 
No. No, they're coming here because their kids are fighting. Their husband's fighting. Their husband's drunk. They're calling you because they burglarized their house and you're not doing anything about it. You know, police officers today don't got a very good name, right? We're looking at things. When I was a kid, my hero, my hero was a guy named Bob Roselli. And why was he my hero? Because I was in a fight one night and Bob broke up the fight. He said, you know what, Scott? You can be anything you want to be. You don't have to be like your dad. That back then, I almost took that as an insult. Right? But little did I know that Bob was speaking life into me. You have the opportunity to speak life into people. You have the opportunity to take what you learned here at this university and make this a better place. Right? It's up to you. It's up to you if you listen to the voices that tell you you can't, or you listen to the voices that tell you you can. It's up to you if you focus on the things that are wrong or the things that are right. Right? That's the end of prayer, if you don't mind. Father God, I do thank you for this opportunity to speak here. Lord, I would not be here this day if it was not for you wanting to be here. And I just pray that each of these young men, young ladies, teachers, and, and professors, Father God, look to you for when things are tough and know that you have the answer for everything. Father, that you are who we should put our focus on. You're who we should listen to. Father, what a great institution, what a great place to learn about your love and your mercy. Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for this group. And I ask that you allow me to go in peace. God, protect everyone that's here. We love you and praise you, Father God. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. That was a good word. Good word. Okay, guys. Um, so Monday nights, Bible study on the SCA room. Uh, Sunday mornings. Um, Sunday mornings we're here, Christian Center Church. Uh, raise your hand if you've received the basket from us this Sunday. 